There he is. I don't eat no meat, no dairy. There he is. The sun, happy planet, with all the carnivores and the destructors on it. Soy milk. Cause cows are for calves. It's not succulent, tasty or kind. It's dead for no reason. Hello and welcome to The Species Barrier, where two vegan environmentalists question how we interact with the planet and the other animals who call it home, and explore that barrier in place which separates the human animal from other species. Mixed martial artist James Wilkes, born in Leicester, won the reality TV show The Ultimate Fighters UK vs USA season. This won him a contract with the top MMA fighting competition in the world, The Ultimate Fighting Championship. He is a plant-based athlete and told us why. Originally, but in 2000, I moved out to the United States to further my martial arts training. I had a real passion for it. So I you know, came here, planned to be here for six months, and now 12 years later, I'm still here. Mixed martial arts, more specifically. Now I have a gym here where I teach martial arts and boxing, kickboxing, and jujitsu out here in Orange County, California. Can you tell our listeners who don't follow mixed martial arts what it is? I think the easiest way to describe mixed martial arts for those that don't know, essentially a combination of the combative sports in the Olympics. So if you took boxing, taekwondo, wrestling and judo that are all in the Olympics and you kind of combine those together, basically have mixed martial arts. So there are other arts involved, but that, you know, for the lay person, that's the best way for to describe it. What is the Ultimate Fighter competition and what was the prize for winning? The Ultimate Fighter is, is basically a TV reality show and they'll try and pick some high-level fighters that aren't in the UFC. The UFC is the premier mixed martial arts organization in the world and so they're looking for new fighters so they try and find some of the the best fighters that aren't yet in that level of the UFC and they'll pit them against each other and you'll live in a house and you have to fight other team members and and try and win the prize and if you win you basically get a six-figure contract in the UFC to fight three times a year. And in your series it was uh, UK fighters versus American fighters for the prize wasn't it? Correct, yeah. So I represented the UK team and basically they picked the best fighters they could find at, at 155 pounds and 170 pounds. You have to forgive me because I've, you know, living in the States, I'm on the pounds rather than the kilograms. <laughs> um, when I left, it was more, we were using stone more, but 155 and 170 pounds and took the best from the UK and then the best guys they could find in the USA. I, re- I was in the 170 division and we had guys in the 155 division and we actually won both from the UK. Yes, and you had to beat uh, Che Mills, who is an established UFC fighter, just for the chance to be on the TV show, didn't you? Yeah, I had to, um, and I had a bit of jet lag too, because I was living in Orange County, California at the time, so an eight-hour time difference. So I had to fly back to England to fight uh, two days later to get my spot on the British team. And uh, he was touted to be one of the you know, favorites to win the show, so that was... Uh, it could have been a very tough fight. Luckily, I was able to finish it in 30 seconds. So <laughs> wow. It worked out well for me. How and when did you start considering veganism? Last year, basically, I was training for a fight against Amir Sadola, who was one of the uh, ultimate fighter winners from another season. And two weeks before the fight, I got injured. I tore my knee pretty badly. And uh, so usually I'm training two hours in the morning and two hours in the evening and teaching the rest of the time. So I had all this free time on my hands, you know, because I wasn't training now. And so I decided to start looking into nutrition as I thought that would be beneficial for my training. I always thought I knew quite a bit about nutrition, but I realized that I was just looking at websites and blogs and, you know, fitness magazines, which is obviously not the best source. It's, unfortunately, there's, you know, the advertising and marketing and special interests, certain, you know, the meat industry and the dairy industry sort of promote this high protein and uh, low carb type of diet. So I just started researching nutrition and then I first switched to grass-fed beef and then I found out that the chicken and the turkey is dipped in pure chlorine, which is a known carcinogen. So then I started really looking into it more and, and seeing how the food was processed and the other problem with the meat especially. And then I realized the dairy, you know, was not very natural and it kind of just progressed from there. So it started on a health and athletic performance thing and it also turned into an ethical thing for me as well. So the combination of those arguments made it really easy for me to go switch to a plant-based diet. Yeah, you've said in the past that veganism ties in with how you see yourself ethically as a person. Could you expand on that idea? 
Yeah, I mean, I think uh, as a person, I want to be considerate and caring, and I don't really believe in in being cruel to animals. And you know, if I saw somebody that was kicking a dog, I would go over and stop them. And uh, I realized I was doing far worse than that by what was on my plate. I think we're so uh, disassociated from our food source these days that we don't realize what goes on. But as the saying goes, if if slaughterhouses had glass walls, everybody would be vegetarian, as Paul McCartney said. I think once you start watching the videos, see the the cruelty and suffering that the animals go through, it's hard to really justify eating it when it's really not necessary, and in fact, it's detrimental to your own health. If you take the ethical argument to the animals and the fact that you're taking food away because of the inefficiency of the system from starving children around the world and damage to the environment and then your own health and the athletic performance as well for me. Mm. You know, if you combine all of those arguments together, the question to me would be not why, why are you vegan, but why aren't you vegan? You know, why would you not be eating your plant-based foods and leaving the animal foods off your plate? What did your time researching nutrition tell you about plant-based foods and which ones do you personally favour? One of the main things, you know, again, I've, I've always concentrated on the, the athletic performance. I mean, some of the health information is out there regarding, you know, cancer and heart disease. I mean, in America, 3,000 people die every day of heart disease, which is largely preventable by eating a plant-based diet. So the health aspects, you know, I learned about those. But in terms of the athletic performance, you know, I found that the animal protein, as well as the animal fat, damages the endothelium, and the endothelium is the lining of the artery. Uh, the endothelium's function is it produces nitric oxide, which nitric oxide is a vasodilator, so it dilates your arteries and allows more oxygen and more nutrients to pass through those arteries and get to your muscles. So basically, if you want to be an athlete and perform the best that you can be, you don't want to be consuming that animal protein and animal fat and damaging those arteries, damaging the endothelium. Basically, you want to repair that and the repair of the endothelium and repair of the arteries has actually been shown in clinical studies. So if you want to be the best athlete you can be, have the best endurance, and be as strong as you can be, you basically want to eat a plant-based diet. And you know, foods that I like to eat, you know, I have oatmeal for breakfast a lot of times, you know, with some fruit in, uh, some nuts maybe, or some almond butter. I'll have cashew curry for dinner sometimes with kale and quinoa, lentils, tempeh, which is a fermented soy product. I'll have that in a stir fry, beans and rice. Uh, my wife makes a great pizza with a, like a pesto sauce and vegetables. I'll make my own hummus. You know, sometimes toast with almond butter and berries on. Th- those are the types of foods that, that I like to eat. But again, with plant-based foods, there's so many options. People think that you're limiting yourself. Mm. But I found that you're actually getting a lot more, lot more options by uh, by going plant-based. A lot more variety. Yeah, we hear that all the time. That once you've opened your mind up and researched uh, plant-based nutrition, that you suddenly find you're actually eating a greater variety of foods than you were previously. Right. I mean, most people look at studies, they tend to rotate through about six or seven meals. Most people that eat, you know, animal products. And that's because the animal products are really the center of the food with most people. So there's only really like four or five animals that we really eat. And then there's, there's milk and eggs as well. So those are only really six food groups. Well, there's actually 2,000 or so plant-based foods. So you're really only knocking off six. And by doing so, you really open up your you know, variety of, of what you're going to eat. So for me, it's uh, been a great experience. You have a website to assist those who are active in becoming vegan easily. Can you tell us about this? Yeah, we have a website called Plant Athlete. So again, my focus is on you know plant-based diet for athletics, you know, as well as health. And to be honest, we probably need to work on that that site a little bit more. But we do have a Facebook page, which is which we post stuff on you know nearly every day, which is uh, facebook.com forward slash Plant Athlete. And we're just sort of putting news out there on all the plant-based athletes and, you know, diet tips and and things like that to help people out. Have you found a vegan diet to have any impact in your athletic performance? Yeah, two weeks after I switched, I actually, in the gym, I was able to lift more weight than I've ever been able to lift in my life. So I've never been very strong at bench press, but with the dumbbells, I had 115, uh, I went up to 115 pounds in each arm and Two weeks before that, the most I'd ever lifted was 105 pound dumbbells in each arm. So it's still not really strong compared to some of the you know guys that really focus on weightlifting. But a 10 pound increase in each arm over a period of two weeks was a significant increase right away. And I've been you know lifting weights for years and never been able to surpass that that 105 pound dumbbell in each hand for bench press uh, for reps. So there was that, and then endurance obviously improved as well. We have a thing we do battling ropes here. I don't know if they have it a lot in England, but basically mm-hmm. working with ropes, swinging them up and down. And at the gym I train at, if you get over 10 minutes, you get your name on the wall. If you get 20 minutes, you get you can put 20 minutes next to your name. 
And that's the most anybody had done. Once I switched to a plant-based diet after a couple of months, I actually uh, was able to do an hour straight. So wow. I was struggling with five or ten minutes more. I was able to go up to a whole hour without stopping. Definitely with strength and endurance, I definitely saw a big improvement. Are there any other fighters who are vegan or are moving in a plant-based direction? If so, who? Yeah, there's a, there's a lot of guys in certain organizations, but even in the UFC, uh, you've got guys that are either vegan or very nearly vegan. They might eat fish once a month or something, but other than that, they're eating a plant-based diet. And others are actually completely vegan, like Aaron Simpson, uh, Mike Danzig, Jake Shield, Nick Diaz, Nate Diaz. All these guys have been doing it for a while now. Definitely some top fighters that are realizing the benefit. What has the reaction been from fellow fighters and those who train at your gym been like to your veganism? Well, you know, some people are quite sceptical to start with. I think they've been so brainwashed by the meat industry, the dairy industry, and, and also the protein powder companies. You know, they think protein, protein, that's the number one question. Where do you get, well, where do you get your protein from? Well, of course, there's protein in all plant foods, really. Mm. So people were sceptical to start with. And then even at my own gym, you know, we, guys have started switching over after seeing the benefit. I and mean, when they roll with me in jiu-jitsu, for example, they can feel my strength, and that's gone up. It's really hard to deny the evidence once you start seeing other guys doing it. You know, over here we have a magazine called Veg News, and they're calling this the year of the vegan athlete. I think it's really starting to move forward, and a lot of people are switching over, you know, either for their health or for their athletic performance, and as well as the uh, the ethical reasons. Yeah, of course, in boxing, you've got uh, Tim Bradley and Mike Tyson. Yep, exactly. Well, Tim Bradley, uh, you know, in great shape, muscular, very well ripped. Of course, Mike's uh, retired now, but yeah. uh, Tim Bradley's a great example of using that plant-based diet for athletic performance. Do you think some of these uh, sceptical and negative reactions tie in with societal ideas of masculinity? Yeah, absolutely. I think, you know, quite a lot of it goes back to the vision of man the hunter. You know, so they, they always put the word hunter first in, in the hunter-gatherer history of human beings. Um, it was probably more like uh, gathering, uh, scavenging, and then hunting. But, of course, it, uh, the hunting has been romanticized, and this being a masculine-dominant society for so long, Obviously, we're going to romanticize the masculine traits of the hunting, whereas in reality, the majority of calories would have come from the gathering, which would be the grandparents, uh, the women, and the children. But uh, being a masculine-dominated society for so long, obviously, they wouldn't want to focus on those. And hunting isn't really very masculine anyway, in my opinion. I mean, if someone was to go barehanded against a lion, it would be pretty tough. But to go to a grocery store and buy some, or oh, sorry, a supermarket uh, as my Americanism coming out again so I don't see hunting as being masculine or as being uh, tough and especially don't see going to the supermarket and buying your meat being a masculine trait whatsoever in fact I would consider it some sort of form of bullying which is a, a trait of somebody who is weak so I don't see eating meat as being a masculine or as being tough. Um, is there anything else you'd like to add? So anyone taking a, eating a plant-based diet should uh, consider taking a B12 supplement. For those people that don't know, mm. um, that is not a it's not an animal product, but it is found in animal products. It's actually made from bacteria, and um, so people should definitely look into B12. And I think people should educate themselves. You know, I think people spend so much time looking into other things, like if you're going to buy a new car, they do some research on the internet, or um, if they're going to university, they spend hours looking at that, or whatever. But I don't think many people spend time really researching nutrition. You know, they just go and eat what their parents fed them, and then what the advertising makes them eat. So I think people should do the, spend a bit of time researching things for themselves. But other than that, we're working on a documentary about plant-based athletes right now. Yeah. So we'll, we'll obviously spread that news on our website and on Facebook pages as more comes out. Who said so, to feature in that? We've got quite a few different athletes, and we're not sure which ones we're using at the moment. But I've already interviewed quite a few. Uh, Rich Roll, Patrick Baboumian, I don't know if he was Germany's strongest man. He's got the world uh, log lift record no. and the world keg lift record. The ones that don't get used in the documentary will also be released on the website. It's, it's been a long time. We've been working on it for the last year and a half. James Wilkes is a founder of the website plantbasedathlete.com, which lists the growing movement for high-performing athletes eschewing animal products. Amongst the names listed at his site are fellow Ultimate Fighter winner Matt Danzig, another UFC fighter and Strike Force champion Jake Shields, former Mr. Universe Jim Morris, top arm wrestler Rob Bigwood, Ultraman Rich Roll, Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu champion John Hines, and world-class strength coach Mike Mailer.